Hello and welcome to another Magic the Gathering video. So we're on the fourth of the five Commander 2016 products now. This is called Stalwart Unity and the lead commander in this is Kynaeus and Tiro of Miletus. And it's red, green, white, blue. As with all the decks here, um, we've got some alternate commanders that utilise the partner ability. So this is the fact that you can have two commanders if both have partner. And on this one, to make the uh, the four colours required, if you sort of want to play these this deck unaltered, is Kyrum uh, Ludovic's Opus, that's the that's a blue red one, and then Siddhar Kondo of Jamora, which is green white, and Ludovic Necro Alchemist, which is blue red. So you could have Chrome and Siddhar together to make the four colours, or Siddhar and Ludovic. If you wanted to play these standalone. Or you wanted to play, say, Chrome and Ludovic, then you would need to basically modify the deck to obviously change it to a two-color. In the case of Chrome Ludovic, it would that would be blue red, obviously. So, Stalwart Unity. Let's just read the the piece on the back here. Kenios and Tyro of Miletus believe harmony is the key to true power. They share the rewards of their unbreakable, sorry, unshakable bond among their supporters, building alliances before unleashing powerful haymaker spells against their enemies. So, if you've not, also if you've not seen the, the first video of, of the five I'm going to be doing, it's worth watching through that one, just because uh, I'm going to partner in a little more detail. Command decks, 100 card decks. These one have uh, four foil commanders. Um, and there's also one sort of jumbo sized foil commander card for the for the lead commander. So let's open this up and go through this deck. See what we have. To get this thing out, damaging it. Okay. So there's our oversized command card. While I've got the camera zoomed out, I'm going to have a quick look at the uh, the insert for this deck. So on one side, we have a little bit, a little bit about commander. How to play a commander game, and then in the centre here we've got a backstory for the the lead commander, and then these sort of three alternates which have the the partner ability. On the flip side, we've got the uh, the deck breakdown uh, shows you all the cards in the deck. It doesn't show you what uh, previous sets they come from, which I, I really like actually, and I know is a feature of the deck lists in the uh, the dual decks. And then what it also does is uh, there's asterisks against de uh, cards here that are new for the release. So let's just go down here. Things like obviously the, the lead commander's new, uh, Sid Siddhar, Kondo of Jamira. So all of these um, partner commanders, Ludovic and also Chrome. And then we've got Prismatic Geoscope, uh, Evolutionary Escalation. What else? Bene Benefactors, Drought, Entrapment, Maneuver, Sylvian Reclamation, Seeds of Renewal, Migration Route, Treacherous Terrain, and Under the Lands, Ash Barrens. So I think if it's... I don't know if it says on the front here actually. Have a quick look. It used to always say how many new cards there were. There's also a number of tokens in here as well. Um, as you've seen with the other decks. I think with most of these products they have like 15 new cards but that that's not 
15 sort of unique ones because some of those newer cards are used across multiple decks in the series. Now here's a little quick reference guide. And let's open up this pack. It's been pretty interesting with these because, uh, I think as I've pointed out on other videos, they've been pretty clever with the mana base um, for the different decks. Obviously there, there is a certain amount of card cycling on the land, but they've tried to sort of mix it up a bit and maybe give you some types of uh, dual lands that, that aren't in necessarily all the decks for those particular two colours. So let's look at this this first card then. Uh, Kaneos, I can't say half of these. Kaneos and Tiro of Miletus, red, green, white, black for a legendary creature, human soldier. It's 2 8. At the beginning of your end step, draw a card. Each player may put a land card from his or her hand onto the battlefield, then each, battlefield, then each opponent who didn't draws a card. Crown Ludvi Lud Ludvik's Opus, three blue red for a 4 4 legendary creature, Zombie Horror, has flying haste. Whenever an opponent casts his or her second spell each turn, draw a card, and this obviously has the partner ability on it, so you can have two commanders if both have partner. Our other partner, or one of our other partner cards, is Ludovic Necro Alchemist. One blue red for a one four legendary creature human wizard at the beginning of each player's end step. That player may draw a card if a player other than you lost life this turn. It's partner and then Siddhar Kondo of Jamara two green white for a two five legendary creature human knight with flanking. So this deck has flanking in it. Whenever a creature without flanking blocks this creature. The, cre the blocking creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. So, so flanking is something from the early days of Magic the Gathering. So if you're, if you're looking for other flanking cards to, uh, to maybe build a, um, a flanking commander deck using Siddhar, then you really need to look back to the early sets in Magic to see uh, some, some flanking cards to do that. Creatures your opponents control without flying or reach can't block creatures with power two or less. And also partner on here. That's a two five. So the decks also have come with tokens and these are double sided. So you can see here we've got soldier elemental on that one. There's ten of these I believe. Spirit and spirit. Spirit and another spirit. Makes me think this is going to be a heavy spirit deck, perhaps. Spirit, spirit, yep. Yeah. Soldier and squid. We've got squids in here. Soldier and squid. Soldier and elemental. Bird and an ogre. Beast and an ogre. So this, um, this particular deck like looks like it's generating lots of different types of token. It should be interesting to see where those all come from. So we just go through this as with the other decks, and um, I read through all the you know go through all the cards, but I'll I'll read in detail the uh, the higher rarity stuff. Veteran Explorer is in here. Humble Defector. Was off Advocist, I think that is. Horizon Chimera. Soul Ring. Commander Sphere. So there's a number of artifacts that are in all the decks. Assault Suit is in here. Evolutionary Escalation. Ghostly Prison is in the deck. Propaganda. Sphere of Safety. 
Swords to Plowsheds, that's a cool card. Arcane Denial, Beast Within, Sylvan Reclamation, Cultivators in here for Ramp, Kodama's Reach, also for Ramp, Migratory Route, that's where our 1 1 white bird creature tokens with flying are coming from, Treacherous Terrain. And some planes here, so I'm assuming this is to separate our lower rarity cards from our higher ones. So it looks like we've got our basic, some of our basic land base there. So now moving on to our higher rarities. Selfless Squire, uh, three and a white for one one creature human soldier with flash. When Selfless Squire enters the battlefield, prevent all damage that would be dealt to you this turn. Whenever damage that will be dealt to you is prevented, put that many plus one plus one counters on selfless squire. Prismatic Geoscope. So for five generic you get an artifact with Prismatic Geoscope enters the battlefield tapped. It's got domain on it. Pretty useful in a four colour deck. So tap it, add X mana in any combination of colours to your mana pool where X is the number of basic land types among lands you control. Benefactors Drought, one and a green, instant untap all creatures until end of turn whenever a creature an opponent controls blocks, draw a card, uh, draw a card and also draw a card on here. Yeah, actually on the, uh, the subject of Domain, uh, with a lot of these commander cards, what's really interesting is that these keywords, um, some of them, you know, have cropped up a lot in Magic, but some of them... Um, gravitate around a certain set that they were produced for and then really haven't been used that much again. So obviously it's definitely worth uh, working out where some of these keywords come from because they're in here for a reason and seeing if there's anything else in that particular set that uh, utilizes or exploits the particular keyword in some way. So I'm thinking here in the case of domain. Entrapment Maneuver, three and a white instant, target player sacrifices an attacking creature. You create X, one, one white soldier creature tokens where X is the creature's, that creature's toughness. So there's our soldier tokens. Seeds of Renewal, six and a green sorcery with Undaunted on it. So this spell costs one less to cast for each opponent. Obviously very effective in, uh, in a multiplayer environment. Return up to two target. Uh, sorry, return up to two target cards from your graveyard to your hand. Exile seeds of renewal. Zedri the Great Hearted is in here. One red, white, black, blue for a two-four legendary creature, a Minotaur Monk. At the beginning of your upkeep, you gain X life and draw X cards, where X is the number of permanents you own that your opponents control. Red, white, blue target opponent gains control of target permanent you control. Progenitor, progenitor mimic, mimic, four green blue for a zero zero creature shapeshifter. You may have progenitor mimic enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield except it gains at the beginning of your upkeep. If this creature isn't a token, create a token that's a copy of this creature. Hushwing Griff, two and a white, two one creature hippogriff with flash and flying. Creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. Chasm Skulker, two and a blue, one one creature, Squid Horror. Whenever you draw a card, put a plus one plus one counter on Chasm Skulker. When Chasm Skulker dies, create X, one one blue, Squid Creature tokens with Island Walk, where X is the number of plus one plus one counters on Chasm Skulker. So there's where our squids are coming from. Edric, Spy Master of Tress. This is looks like a really interesting deck, actually. Uh, one green blue for a 2-2 two, two legendary creature elf rogue whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents its controller may draw a card guafa hazard profiteer one white blue legendary creature human rogue white and blue tap put a bribery count on target creature you don't control its controller draws a card 
Creatures with bribery counters on them can't attack or block. It's a 2-2. Two, two. Selvala Explorer returned. One green-white. 2-4 legendary creature elf scout. It's got parlay on it. Tap each creature player reveals the top card of his or her library. For each non-land card revealed this way, add green to your mana pool. Then you gain one life for each... Then Sorry, you gain one life, then each player draws a card. A crown horse for generic mana defender. When a crown horse enters the battlefield, each opponent gains control of it. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent creates a 1-1 white soldier creature token. And it's 0-4. Windborn Muse... Three and a white creature spirit with flying. Creatures can't attack you unless their controller plays two for each creature he or she controls that's attacking you. And that's a two, three. Psychosis, Psychosis Crawler. Five generic artifact creature horror. Psychosis Crawler's power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in your hand. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. Star, star on there, obviously. Kazul, Tyrant of the Cliffs, 3, uh, 2 red for a 5-4 legendary creature, Ogre Warrior. Whenever a creature an opponent controls attacks, if you're the defending player, create a 3-3 three, three red Ogre creature token, unless that creature's controller plays, pays 3. Realm Seekers, 4, 2 green, 0, zero creature Elf Scout. Realm Seekers enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, where X is the total number of cards in all players' hands. 2 and a green, remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter from Realm Seekers, search your library for a land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. This deck's got loads of really interesting stuff going on in it, actually. Lots of XX, lots of counter business I think we're gonna see rubble hulk four red green creature elemental star star rubble hulk's power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control blood rush one red green discard rubble hulk target attacking creature gets x plus x plus x till end of turn where x is the number of lands you control blazing archeon six and three white for a 5-6 creature Archeon. Flying. Creatures can't attack you. There's also, if you notice, there's a bit of a sort of, what I call a prison theme. You saw Ghostly Prism and there's several cards here that sort of prevent stuff from happening to you. Um, Imperial Plate. Two generic artifact equipment. <coughs> Quit. Creature gets plus one plus one for each card in your hand. Equip for two. Oh, Howling Mine is in here. Okay, so we got large amount of card draw. So two generic artifacts at the beginning of each player's draw step, and that's each player. If Howling Mind is untapped, that player draws an additional card. Temple Bell, another card, bit of card draw here. Three generic, tap, each player draws a card. Vensus Journal, so this is pretty important when you're drawing cards. You've got a way of uh, making sure that you don't have to discard at end of turn. And uh, this is five generic, and you have no minimum hand size. At the beginning of each, uh, sorry, at the beginning of your upkeep, you gain one life for each card in your hand. Keening Stone, um, six generic artifact, five tap target player puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard, where X is the number of cards in a player's graveyard. So I've got Milling going on here as well. Oaks of Druids is in here. One and a green enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player chooses target player who controls more creatures than he or she does, and is his or her opponent. The first player may reveal cards from the top of his or her library until he or she reveals a creature card. If he or she does, that player puts that card onto the battlefield, and all other cards revealed this way into his or her graveyard. I think this is probably an older card. You can often tell by the length of the text on these. 
yeah, that is, a, that is an old magic card for anybody that knows magical. Recognise that one. Rights of Flourishing. Two and a green enchantment at the beginning of each player's draw step. That player draws an additional card. Each player may play an additional land on each of his or her turns. So, a ton of card draw here. It'll be interesting to see what other cards we've got which allow you to have uh, more than seven cards at your end of your turn. Like, there's no maximum hand size. Uh, there's a number of different cards that can do that in Magic. There's also a number of cards that people don't always play that do it as well. Lurking Predators. Four and two green enchantment. Whenever an opponent car casts a spell, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it into the battlefield. Otherwise, you may put that card on the bottom of your library. Swan Song. Single blue. Instant. Counter target enchantment instant or sorcery spell its controller creates a 2 2 blue bird creature token with flying. Ab ablation, 2 and a white instant. The owner of the target non land permanent shuffles it into his or her library, then draws two cards. Reigns of power, untap all creatures you control and all creatures target opponent controls. You and that opponent each gain control of all creatures the other cr controls until end of turn. Those creatures gain haste until end of turn. There's lots of fun um, exchanges going on in this deck as well. You can see, you know, you do this and then someone gets this or you're swapping stuff around. Mines aglow. Single blue, blue join forces. Starting with you, each player may pay, pay any amount of mana. Each player draws X cards where X is the total amount of mana paid this way. Collective Voyage, single green sorcery, another one with join forces on it. Starting with you, each player may pay any amount of mana. Each player searches his or her library for up to X basic land cards, where X is the total amount of mana paid this way. Puts them onto the battlefield tap, then shuffles his or her library. Hoof Prince of the Stag, one and a white tribal enchantment elemental. Whenever you draw a card, you may... You may put a hoof print counter on hoof prints of the stag. Two and a white. Remove four hoof print counters from hoof prints of the stag. Create a four four white elemental creature token with flying. That's where those are coming from then. Activate this ability only during your turn. Tempt with discovery. Three and a green tempting offer. Search your library for a, a land card. Uh, this is a sorcery by the way. And put it in, onto the battlefield. Each opponent may search his or her library for a land card and put it onto the battlefield. For each opponent who searches a library this way, search the library for a land card and put it onto the battlefield. Then each player who searches the library this way shuffles it. Search the library this way shuffles it. Wave of Reckoning, four and a white sorcery. Each creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. Reverse the sand, six to white, sorcery, Redis redistribute any number of players' life totals. Blasphemous act, eight in a red, sorcery, blasphemous act costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield. Blasphemous act deals 13 damage to each creature. Okay, so we're now moving on to our land base. We've got Exotic Orchard in here, that's been in all the other decks. Um, Tap add to your mana pool one mana of any colour the land an opponent controls could produce. So because this makes more sense in a multi color um, multiplayer format. Forbidden Orchard. Tap add one mana of any colour to your mana pool. Whenever you tap Forbidden Orchard for mana, target opponent creates a one one colour spirit spirit creature token. Homeward Path. Tap add colourless to your mana pool. Tap. Each player gains control of all creatures he or she owns. So that's a great sort of resetting card. Then we've got some the rest of our basics here. Um, we've seen obviously this artwork before, but um, I'm particularly impressed by the uh, the artwork in this particular product. Lovely sort of forest here. I don't know if you can see there's like a shooting star sort of in the it's there. But 
that's that that one I just find a really nice touch it, it's got um there was there some artwork that would often appear in the the core sets and this doesn't seem to be exactly like that but it's got it's got echoes of that in it ash barrens so this is a, a basic land cycling land that we've seen i think in all the decks so far so tap add colorless germanopal and basic land cycling one so for one generic discard this card search your library for a basic land card reveal it and put it into your hand then shuffle your library azorus chancery we've seen a number of these already in the different colors so these enter the battlefield tapped um, when it enters the battlefield you have to basically bounce a hand to your land uh, to your hand and uh, when it does end up you get to tap for white and blue command tower in all the decks you tap add, add any color any of sorry add to your mana pool one mana of any color in your commander's color identity evolving wilds in all the decks sacrifice evolving wilds search your library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tap then shuffle your library frontier bevel whack again we've seen these these are these three color tap lands this one generates uh, for green blue red so these are this is from khan's block we've got gruel turf um same as the Azorus one, but this is in red green. Is it boiler works? Same again, but in blue red. Jungle shrine. So similar to the card we saw earlier. Tap land for three with three colours, and this one's red, green, white. Cross and verge. So cross and verge into the battlefield tapped. You can tap it. Add colourless Germanopal. For two generic tap, sacrifice Cross and Verge, search your library for a forest card and a plains card, and put them onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Myriad Landscape also enters the battlefield tapped. Tap add colourless Germanopal for two tap, sacrifice Myriad Landscape, search your library for up to two basic land cards that share a land type, put them onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Mystic Mon Mon Monastery. Uh, three color tap land in blue red white opal palace um, so tap add colorless germanopal one generic tap add germanopal one mana of any color in your commander's color identity if you spend this mana to cast your commander it enters the battlefield with a number of additional plus one plus one counters on it equal to the number of times it's been cast from the command zone this game Rupture Spire, another tap land with this one, uh, also enters the battlefield and unless you pay one generic, you have to sacrifice it. But it does add one mana for it, of any colour to your mana pool once that untaps. Seaside Citadel, three colour tap land in green, white or blue. Terramorphic Expanse, so same as Evolving Worlds. Uh, tap it, sacrifice Terramorphic Expanse, search your library for a basic land card, then put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Transguild Promenade. Um, I was just playing with this this morning actually. This is in re Return to... Yeah, Return to Ravnica. Um, so it enters the battlefield tapped when Transguild Promenade enters the battlefield. Sacrifice it unless you pay one. Tap, add one mana of any colour to your mana pool. And the last card here is Selesnia Sanctuary. So another one of these uh, two color bounce lands. And this one, once it uh, becomes operational, taps for green white. So that, as you can probably tell, <laughs> as um, I've been going through these, I, I, this deck is particularly interesting. There's lots of um, very interactive stuff going on in this deck. Um, bit of a sort of group hug element to it but uh, there's token stuff there's uh, things that exploit the multi-colors we've got some um, counter type things there's um, prison like effects in here yeah it's uh, looks like it'd be a really interesting deck to play um, 
how well it would win would be uh, another matter. But uh, yeah, in terms of, of the sort of interacting with, with the other players, um, this may well be, without me, me actually going through, looking back at the ones we've done, but this may well be the sort of most interactive um, player-wise of, of the decks that we've seen so far. So let's just uh, do a quick recap here. We we'll just go back to our commanders. So these are these are the four commanders. So this is what I've been referring to as our lead commander. This is Canios and Tiro of Miletus. So this one had card draw on it, um, and also was was doing stuff with land. So it was sort of caring about uh, you know, helping with card draw and. Uh, also allowing people to put extra land into play. And then Crown. It's got Flying Haste on it. And cares about an opponent casting a second spell. And that's obviously part, part can be partnered up with a, another partner commander. Such as Ludovic. So Ludovic uh, cares about card draw. Um, tied in with uh, losing life and Siddhar which can be paired with um, in actual fact with this deck you would obviously want to like I said earlier you want to pair either those two or those two to keep it on on color but Ludwig another card that cares about uh, drawing cards at the beginning of each player's end step that player may draw a card if a player other than you lost life this turn. So yeah, it's like a really interesting deck. Even worthy of going in the uh, the uh, box store commander toolkit as I did one time. I might track down another copy for that. Okay, there we have it. That was the uh, store unity Commander 2016 deck. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.